congratulation to all my students who are supposed to attend this module teaching on William Wordsworth's poet poem that is daffodils. Daffodils as a poem, it has got so many implications in, at different places like a, uh, graduation, plus two, high school, PG, but the connotative meaning, si, the internal meaning is si, very in depth, in extent, because plus two students are higher secondary students and accordingly we are to get ready that we must go through the parameter of the syllabus as prescribed by the higher secondary schools by the government or class IX or sorry XI or XII. In Odisha it is called plus two but in all India pattern it is called XI and XII. In the poem we come across the name of the poet William Wordsworth who happens to be the nature poet. Why is he called a nature poet? He is called a nature poet because he deals with nature, not nature only, and through nature he discovers a lot of morals. Even he discovers what is pantheism, he discovers how nature is so friendly with that of our own uh, society and individuals. Even the commonest people, the ordinary people, they are in association with the nature. And the nature is a storehouse of inspiration. According to him, the poetry is a spontaneous overflow of a powerful feeling. It takes its origin from the emotion recollected in a tranquility. It means the poem which comes out of emotion and the languages which we use all must be understood by the ordinary and the common people. In Odisha, we, say, we, we think and we say it is a sort of a Gana Kavita. The kind of a poetry which is understood by one and all, by the emperor, by the kings and also by the pedestrians or the farmers in the fields. So this poem has its own uniqueness. And in this poem, the poet has given us the romantic elements but the meaning she implied becomes so deeper, but we need not go so deeper because we are at the level of X double I or plus to second year. Let us try to know what this romantic or romanticism means. Romanticism or romantic is a word. It is originally derived from the Latin word romanticui as has been discussed here. That is the documentary romantic we and romantic we originally means dream plus imagination the poem that is that deals with the dream and imagination is called originally a romantic poet so in this poem there is a dream there is also imagination because our poet once upon a time he was traveling aimlessly all of a sudden he comes across a lot of golden daffodils by the lake side and when he looks into the flowers he finds some living organs dancing there like dancers before the temples they are dancing being drifted by the wind it is wind that decides how the daffodils are up and down, up and down just like dancers by the side of the lake water on the other hand, lake water itself or lake waves, they are also dancing. But the dance of the daffodils is far more better than that of the dance of the lake waves. The poet finds a host of golden daffodils, uncountable daffodils blooming along the path of the bay, margin of a bay. And while saying so, he means to say that 10,000 did he see at a glance? It does not mean really he uh, come across 10,000. It means the quantity of daffodils is so much so that it cannot be counted. So the number of daffodils is uncountable. 
how is it compared it is compared with the stars in the milky way as we are unable to really count the stars in the milky way we are also unable to count the number of flowers or daffodils blooming along the side of the bay so by comparing the by comparing the daffodils with that of the stars in the blue sky the poet gives not only the natural quality to the nature but also the spiritual divine quality of the stars is ascribed or given to the daffodils so nature is both way active nature is simply a nature giving pleasure and delight and nature is simply something other than this that is simple nature is divine or spiritual and the poet by and by comes to feel that when he was traveling he says i wander lonely as a cloud that floats on high over valleys and hills when all at once i saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze so the poet says where do we where do we find out the flowers i mean daffodils the daffodils are blooming by the side of the lake water under the trees how do they dance they dance fluttering as if birds are dancing the sound flutter itself indicates as if the daffodils are flowers they are flapping their wings and the sound is very much like a bird and the wind is a breeze that is gentle and mild vernal wind by this the poet says wind is calm and quiet flowers look very charming like gold the lake water is jingling and the stars are blooming high over the head in the sky and the valley is full of flowers both sides of the lake water and the valley is full of flowers he is the only one so by being left alone in this world the poet not as a man first but as a poet he receives the internal meaning of the flowers he is jakundu with he he accepts the flowers as his friend he accepts the flowers as a permanent source of inspiration and imagination that is why he is nearer and nearer to the flower but never touches the flower why because beauty is something that is to be felt sensationally but that is not to be plucked out if beauty could be the physical beauty the poet is helpless the poet talks of that beauty which is organic beauty but it is divine it is spiritual it is giving solace peace to man and mankind and there is in nature the presence of a godhood that is why the poet says in other poems there is a sense of a pantheism so the poet here also says a host of a golden daffodils how many daffodils a host of a golden daffodils host of a golden daffodils means uncountable daffodils how does he walk he walks alone all alone and this loneliness is broken by the attraction or we may say to convert the odia or hindi language into english the khas 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 sound of the daffodils the poet goes there finds the daffodils and gets pleasure and he is lost emotionally there and in the over the head there is a blue sky on the earth he it is a valley in the little distance there are hills and mountains so entire atmosphere sky flower water waves stars everything is natural elements so the poem is a romantic poem then the poet comes to the next conclusion how does how do the bird the, the flowers gather the poet feels they are not flowers they are a crowd so the human quality has been given to the poem and also divine quality has been given to the poem that means daffodils so daffodils is charged with larger human sense and also deepest god or spiritual sense 
Then the poet comes down and the poet says, the daffodil, see, the poet saw the daffodil as he was traveling aimlessly all alone in English countryside. English countryside. I mean, no, countryside means remote and optional. The poem, the poet is fond of nature. So, he is not fond of town or city or mega metropolis. So, he has gone there. And all of a sudden, he comes across those flowers. Then the poet is very much happy. Continuous as the stars that shine, they stretched in a never-ending line. Like stars in the Milky Way. They are widespread, galaxy to galaxy. And we can't really go on counting their number. Likewise, here the poet says, continuous. Who are continuous? The daffodils are continuous like the continuous stars, which is sign, which is sign in the sky and twinkle on the Milky Way. The stars are twinkling on the Milky Way. The flowers are, are also twinkling by the lake water, lake side. So the poet brings a very living contrast between the two nature, natural elements. They stretched, who stretched? The flowers or the stars, their stars, they stretch in a never ending line along the margin of the So flowers also, as long as they are widespread, so long so the stars are widespread. Along the margin of the the stars are not along the margin of the flowers are along the margin of the but the stars are in the Milky Way. So the poet says here that 10,000 saw I at a glance tossing their heads in a sprightly dance. By saying this, the poet does not mean exactly, exactly he comes like us 10,000. He means to say more than that. The sense is implied. The sense is extra introvert, not extrovert. By saying one, it does not mean one. It is something more than one. So when the poet says, 10,000 saw I at a glance, it means to say, if you at a glance of 10,000, by opening two eyes, the poet comes across, then it is a crores and crores numbers of flowers, infinite number of flowers. So the poet uh, discusses or speculates and says, the waves beside them danced. The waves, the lake water. The lake water waves by the gentle wind, they also dance. But the dance of the daffodil sea is surpassing, is outwitting, is completely over, over, getting over <coughs> the dance of uh, the waves. Like he, in another <coughs> of his poem, he says, The song of the cuckoo and the nightingale are far are less better than the song of the solitary river. The little girl, the pigeon girl. Here also he says that the dance of a daffodil is far more better than that of the dance of the waves in the in the lake water. And he for him, the poet he says, the flowers are gay, the flowers are friend. Gay. What kind of a friends? Very jocund friends, very mixing friends, sociable friends. They are best companions of the poet. Like true friends, the flowers do not deceive the poet and poet's heart. So the poet says, in such a jokundu company, I guessed and guessed and but little thought. I guessed and guessed but little thought. It means the poet is lost emotionally so much so in nature that no thoughts come back to his mind. And in that very particular point of time, like a Muni, Rushi, Yogi, he is so much meditated into the nature that other thoughts never come to him. And materialistic wealth, what wealth has so to me? The poet says, what wealth has so to me? That means materialistic wealth has got no meaning, no comparison, nothing equal with that of the emotional attraction of nature. So being a flower, it also belongs to the part of the nature. So the poet he also here absolutely says, I gazed and gazed, but little thought. What wealth this show to me has brought? 
so during his lifetime even though he has gorgeous dress to put on and everything luxurious but he doesn't accept it as a price or a value of society for him nature is a tremendous flow of infinite pleasure a perpetual pleasure a perennial pleasure a natural pleasure really it is a natural flow of life so the poet here he means to say that the poet poem itself has got nothing but a sort of a reciprocation so in the first three stanza number one stanza number two stanza number three stanza the poet discusses how he came alone uh, and there are where hills and mountains on the valley all of a sudden he is attracted by a host of golden daffodils he saw the daffodils became happy became a part of daffodils he saw the dancing lake water waves he compared the lake water dance with the dance of the daffodils and the daffodils dance is much better than that of the waves he compares the flowers with the number of the stars in the on the milky way so he finds out divinity or divine spiritualism he finds out the human quality in nature because nature does not deceive anybody nature is reciprocated by nature and nature is mutual nature does not betray anyone in the society so far man may betray man may cut a nature cut down a nature cut down a tree but a tree cannot cut down a man after these experiences are over the poet has gone back to his own home at some days when he is fed up with the worries and anxieties of the society or any kind of a tension is there so he goes to take rest in the bed he sleeps while he is sleeping those previous experiences and the dances of the flowers come back to him as a flashback and the poet feels as if he is dancing with the daffodils emotionally so the poet says often often when on my couch i lie i in vacant or pensive mood when i am on my bed in the sad mood or vacant mood what happen those flowers they come back flash upon my inner heart the inner heart of the poet and the poet feels as if he it is a bliss of solitude godly bliss and his worries and anxieties go out and he becomes very much happy and there my heart is feel with with pleasure feels inside the heart of the poet there is pleasure and pleasure and pleasure only and dances with the daffodils the poet dances with the daffodils in imagination that is in dream so when the dream is over what we see the poet is absolutely absolutely free from worries and anxieties tensions of the society and he feels as if he, he is really a dynamic person highly energized person and he feels quite at home so the harmony of nature with the harmony of man man to nature and nature to man relationship has been defined in this poem in a very beautiful manner and this poem has become a famous poem all over the world that is daffodils you are the daffodils of my life it means you are a friend philosopher and a guide of my life so the poet is here absolutely true to say that nature is a sort of a medicine to the malarious mind of mankind so if we worship nature if we love nature nature will love in return without any condition without any commercial tendency and bias uh, in the end of the poem i mean to say your william wordsworth who is happened at or who is called the high priest of nature he is called the high priest of nature because he deals with nature he has his elder sister miss dorothy it is said that he has got tremendous inspiration from his eldest sister miss miss dorothy it is dorothy who has inculcated or imbibed in him the zest for nature and nature's love anyway we see that the poet of the period that is romantic period they are like william wordsworth with human beings their sentiments their feelings their thoughts 
and they never they are unlikely the 18th century po poet uh, like uh, john dryden or you may say alexander pope in their case it is prosaic poetry but in here the poems languages are simple free verse writing no difficult words mentioned thoughts are very simple anybody can understand it provided line by line if we go and discover thanking you all uh, my dear students me and myself uh, i as you know i am a much more uh, experienced for since so over 43 years uh, of teaching i now encourage you all that if you have any doubts in your mind any doubts in your mind any feelings that that is that are not that are contradictory you may kindly give your opinion or complain in below this uh, program okay thank you you must lodge your complaint or you must give your suggestion or you must uh, send questions to be clarified in the next class thank you